How do you do? My name is Alec Rafter. I'm a targeted individual, and I'm giving my statement for the 723 media event that's uh, happening in New Jersey, uh, 2016. First, I want to show you how I'm living. I have uh, written this statement, and I'm going to try to get through this and read this. Uh, I was first targeted on September 27, 2006. This is when it all began for me. The reason I was targeted was because a new tenant moved into my apartment building on Haight Street a year and a half prior to that date. She was a night student at the Cordon Bleu in San Francisco. She would come back and start partying at midnight or 1 a.m. Monday through Thursday until 7 in the morning. She would start to play music uh, and have her friends climb up and down the fire escape under the roof, which was my ceiling. I was very cordial with her and explained that I had uh, to work in the morning, but that didn't change her behavior. She still uh, continued to party. I told her it was okay during the weekends, but during the week I had to get some sleep. I worked at a financial holding company in San Francisco called d and Walter and Company. I would also like to state I'm a graduate of New York University. Eventually I started to complain to the landlord. She sold the building and the new owners had a property management company manage the building. I started to call them every morning complaining uh, about this and I was only getting uh, one to one and a half hours of sleep per night. And this was over a year and a half period. After not getting much uh, results, I started to call the police for noise complaints. Her father, a CIA attorney from Denver, Colorado, called me and later uh, came to visit her. I would see them walking together from my window. One day, when he was leaving the building, I was by the window smoking and I heard him say over the phone, uh, because I want him targeted. I did not know what that meant at the time, but shortly afterwards, I became a targeted individual. I first uh, felt uh, an extreme surge of electromagnetic, electromagnetic magnetic energy and a great pressure on my body. Uh, it was so bad that I couldn't move, and when I was laying on my bed, I had to struggle to move off from my futon on the floor and try to escape this great pressure. Then I was starting to get gang stalked. It started off with a few CIA people whom I later identified. One tried to shoot me at Golden Gate Park with a black rear, black deer rifle. I had to leave the apartment due to psychotronic torture and went to uh, went into the park for a walk. I noticed a white Acura 2005 MDX following me slowly. Midway into the park, I crossed from the right side of the street to the left. The car pulled in front and made a U-turn. I had uh, it had stopped a bit in front of me, and a man wearing dark sunglasses, goatee, short cropped hair, black leather jacket, stepped out of the car with a black rifle and a black scope. He was looking right at me. I had less than two seconds to react. Before he closed the SUV door and was able to raise his rifle over the hood of the car, I jumped off the sidewalk and down a slope through some bushes and trees and sprinted from the midpoint of the park back to the east side. I was pouring in sweat. I eventually made it to a, a veterinarian's office where he called the police. I was pouring in sweat and completely out of breath panting. When the police arrived, I told them what happened. I first told them that I felt unsafe going back to my apartment and that I needed to go somewhere else. He first took me to UCSF Medical Center, then an ambulance took me to San Francisco General Hospital. This happened on Tuesday, April 25, 2006. I, feeling the effects of what I just experienced, plus the intense electromagnetic torture was felt so unnatural, I was strapped down to a table and given a sedative. My medical records, uh, from San Francisco General said that I arrived there on May 5, 2006. During that period, I was microchipped with about 100 RFID chips, which I later found out are called Vera chips made by the Raytheon Corporation. I had been out uh, for over a week. Upon my release from the hospital, I went back to my apartment and my torture began to change. I started to hear voices, voice to skull or V2K and Medusa which places voices in anything that makes sound, i.e. a car motor, a fly's wings, water running, the wind uh, blowing past my ears. I heard footsteps on the roof. I went to investigate, but there was no one there. I noticed that they knew what I was doing and knew my thoughts. I started to look for cameras and recording devices in my apartment, but couldn't find any. I later found out that this technology was called remote neural monitoring and remote viewing or advanced viewing. Via my brain signature or EEG, they are able to hack into my audio and visual cortex.
They can hear my thoughts and yes, look through my eyes. They can see uh, via their computer monitor what I see, dream about, or imagine. This start of this technology began in the 1960s. I moved from my apartment and planned to move to a friend's in Los Angeles. I moved my belongings to my mother's place in Lafayette, California, stored some things there, and packed what I needed for LA. My friend's father became ill and my plans to move down there fell through. While I was being tortured there, the Lafayette Police slash Contra Costa County Sheriff's Department got involved with my gang stalking. Once on a bar train, I heard someone talking to me. I got up and walked back and noticed the main voice of the person who was torturing me at the time talking into his hands. My uh, gang stalkers are the CIA, NSA, DOD, and Contra Costa County Sheriff's Department. Over the past 10 years, I can identify 60 of my torturers and know over 20 personally, as most of whom I went to either grammar school, junior high, and high school with who became Contra Costa police. The cops get this military-grade equipment at the county level. These 20-plus people did not want me targeted as they, knew, as they knew me, but they could not do anything to prevent it. One of them is one of my best friends since I was 12 years old. I've been stabbed in the leg by the Lafayette police in front of my mother while visiting her while I was on the phone uh, with the then Governor Schwarzenegger's office. I called uh, his office after I noticed a person I recognized from San Francisco in a beige suit flashing a gold badge at my neighbor's house next door. He knows the same girl I was dating with at that time. His parents, brothers, and sister are CIA. This was getting out of hand. I called the governor's office because I know Annette Benning the actress. I was in a play with her at the American Conservatory Theater, A Midsummer Night's Dream. She was my teacher and wrote my NYU recommendation. And uh, know that she is best friends with Maria Shriver, Arnold Schwartz, Schwarzenegger's wife at the time. The cops came over, ran past my mother, put handcuffs on me while I was on the phone, and I was forced to give a, up the call to, the, you know, to his receptionist. I asked, what are you doing? What's going on? That's all I said. He smashed my face in a chair, breaking my tooth, stabbed me in the leg with a box cutter, and elbowed me in the cheek. The officer told me, are you going to cooperate? Afterwards, they placed me in the back of their police car and discussed amongst each other if they should plant crack or meth on me. The officer said, well, we could put it in his urine, to which he replied, good thinking. An ambulance came, and I went to Contra Costa County Health Services in Martinez. Upon getting there, I was wheeled up to the main counter and demanded yelling to see a doctor. My face was swollen, half my tendon was shredded, and I was bleeding. They wheeled me to a 5150 holding pen and let me bleed for 24 hours. Every two hours, I went to the nurse's desk and asked if I could see a doctor to get x-rays, MRIs, uh, some treatment, nothing. Uh, later, I spoke to two, two nurses about what happened. I told them everything. The nurse wrote in my medical records, he does not know what happened to his leg. I took a drug test and there was nothing in my system, but my medical records stayed on a piece of paper, add PCP or ecstasy. They couldn't figure out what to plan on me, and I had already taken the test. I woke in the morning to find a cop sleeping next to me in a hospital gown with a gun on the floor. I slept in front of the hall camera by the door as I did not trust what was happening. He got up, left the room, came back, retrieved an old 38. Uh, with a brown handle and walked to the other room. There were only two patients there at that time, I being one of them. The other patient in the other room said to the nurse across him in the hall, there's someone in here with a gun. The nurse replied, don't worry, it's just a police officer. The cop left out the emergency exit and I got proper documentation at Durham Muir Medical, Hus Medical Center in Walnut Creek. My medical records have been tampered with I am being framed. I have no criminal record. I have been bankrupted by the police with over $25,000 in medical bills, maintained as homeless. All my electronics have been hacked. All my phones over the years, whatever company I, whatever company I use, is hacked. They know my passwords via remote neural monitoring. Um, prevent me from finding work and maybe a bogus 5150 to discredit me and prevent me from finding an attorney. Not that I can afford one or be willing to, you know, or find one willing to sue the government. I sent over 5,000 job queries with three responses, and those were messed with. They delete my posts, pictures, etc. from my Facebook account. Prevent me from making phone calls, everything electronic they control. I've been tortured 24-7, minute after minute, for 10 years. 
It doesn't matter where I go, Southern California, Oregon, San Francisco, Oakland, etc. Anywhere I cannot escape it. Through Voice to Skull and Medusa, I've listened to millions of death threats, mutilation threats, told to commit suicide, you name the subject. In 2001, NASA Future Warfare document, they call it Radio Frequency Brain Interrogation. I've been poisoned, had three RFID chips in my heart explode with electromagnetic pulse. Been gaslighted by people with synthetic telepathy, the army calls it artificial telepathy. Slept in shelters on streets in many cities. They said they were going to evict my mother, which is what they are doing, trying to do now. She lives in an all-woman's building. I've been tortured with directed energy weapons. I felt my body being cut with a knife, my limbs move, done with ultrasound. They turn on and vibrate on Vera chips, dealt with years of sleep deprivation and dream manipulation. They can turn energy into kinetic energy. There is much to explain and say uh, regarding microwaves, millimeter waves, scalar waves, and all the electromagnetic frequencies that they use. The ELF, VLF, ULF, cell towers, Gwen towers, ballistic missile system, over the horizon radar, the telemetry, the satellites, the CIA particip principal participants, aka honeypots, FBI term, I have had and now uh, I've had and how they become to sabotage my life even more. My organized stalking is very extensive and has involved many hundreds of people over the years. My targeting is torture. In every state of this union, this is happening in every state of this union and happening all over the world. Many people have been killed over this and the end result of this, according to the hyper game theory, is the death of the target. There is a classified playbook for this torture program. We all experience similar things all over the world. We are asking for help, relief from this torture, to get our once productive lives back and to be able to enjoy it once again. No one is helping us, not our politicians, our human rights groups, the media, the law. We have no recourse other than to sit and brutally suffer day after day, year after year, minute after minute. We are asking for your help. Please help us. Believe us, we are not crazy delusional, paranoid, or schizophrenic. We need this to end. Thank you.